nostalgia 80s horror slash horror comedies. Uh, now we're going to do 1984's Children of the Corn. So, <laughs> and again we and again we have mixed opinions in terms of the film's quality, etc. So what do you guys think? Just kick it up to it. Alright, I, I grew up watching it. So when I was a kid and I watched it, I was like, oh, Stephen King, cool. You know, and so I guess I, I enjoyed it in that aspect. I, I acknowledge it's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. Uh, there's a lot of hokey parts to it. Uh, you know, but I like the premise of it. And it's been, I want to say, over 20 years since I've read the short story of it by Stephen King. Uh, and I remember, I barely remember it. I just remember it was a lot darker. And I think there were no survivors in terms of the main character, like the Linda Hamilton character. Yeah. Was it Vicky and the bird? No, in the, in the short, they're both like murdered by the cold and like their eyes are gouged out and all these and different I, things. And I think in the story, it's the cult is a little more creepy because you see certain, and because they won't introduce, if I remember correctly, they don't introduce the cult until like in the second half of the story yeah. or something. Yeah. Like that. It's a but lot like, the, in that aspect, it's a lot, the movie's a lot similar to the short story. Yeah, but you see like little things where you see like some corn husks here and there. And, and I know, I'm not, I'm not, I know, it sounds ridiculous. I know I'm not sorry, doing it yeah, Sorry, I was trying to hold it in, guys. But yeah, like like where you see certain things. And yeah, if you were to read it, you'll be like, yeah, it sounds a bit cheesy. But if you put your, your I guess... If you kind of put your frame of mind to it, like, and then you say, "Well, there's this cult with this demon uh, he entity." Who, he who walks behind the room. Yeah, uh, that's that's governing these kids to become a cult, and then you see the kids later. Like, I could understand why it would be creepy because sometimes children can be very creepy. So, so I can kind of see in that aspect. But in terms of the movie itself, I thought it was all, I thought it was okay. Especially seeing it old, uh, you know, as the older I get, it's like, yeah, it's cheesy, and it 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 holds up somewhat, not not completely, but in terms of the creepiness, in terms of certain creepy aspects to it, it does kind of hold up a bit. I, I wish the movie was a little more like the the story, where spoiler alert, like there are no survivors. It's just the kids just kind of run amok and continue to run amok. Well, that part always seemed to me like they. Hollywood, Hollywooded up the movie where there's mm -hmm. like the happy Hollywood ending, and, yeah. and they survive, you know, with a little, with some couple of nicks and bruises, but they survive. Like, but I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I keep looking at Worm Boy. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> go ahead. I'm gonna keep it short. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was introduced to this movie when I was, of course, around you guys' age, mm -hmm. but I just never liked it. And it, it was creepy, I give it that, it's creepy. The acting sucks, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The story itself, does, there's some parts that make no sense. I'm like, where where did this cult come from? You know, why are they doing this kind of thing? Yeah, they kind of give you a hint, but I'm like, well, they're just kids that are assholes, you know? Oh, yeah. And they're, they want you to know that they're there and they're gonna kill everybody what below 19 or 18 I forgot right, yeah. but it's just so bad I'm like I can't watch this anymore like yes I saw it well, but for, for me what what's bad about this movie is the pacing mm -hmm. there's a lot there, there's a long period like in the toward, like I guess the middle of the movie where mm -hmm. um, the young couple or not well they're adults but they're a young couple where they're where they get stranded in Gatlin mm -hmm. and they're they're like looking for anybody and it's like a ghost town and I mean it just it drags during that yeah, portion there are some like it drags bad mm -hmm. during that portion of the movie like they're looking around trying to find a phone or trying to find anybody to talk to and they can't and it's but it's just like 
they spent way, the director spent way too much time establishing like, okay, this is a ghost town and they're not going to find any phones. Like I felt like he could have done that a lot quicker. They could have and he could have focused on other aspects of the movie that were more interesting. Yeah, and then they find the old man, yeah. uh, Archie Armstrong's character, the old man, and 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 it's kind of funny how he has an agreement with the children. I think they, they like he supplies them fuel or something like that. He supplies them with no, yeah, that's stupid fuel. fuel. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Isaac's like, man, eh, screw this, I'm gonna kill him. But then who's gonna give you your fuel now? You know, so it's it's shit like that where it's like, ah, oh, really? That's well, I mean, it's like I was saying when we were talking about it before we we recorded. Like, I like any horror movie that has that premise of like urban people. Mm -hmm. getting lost in like a rural area mm -hmm. and they're like stranded or, or they're in need or their car breaks down and there's and there are people that have like zero like little to no experience surviving in rural areas yeah and then there's like these you know there's like the these somewhat mythical like rural you know hillbilly psycho type of characters which I guess is based on like Ed Gein and people like that, mm -hmm. that they come across and they have to try to survive with very limited means and limited knowledge of how to survive. See, I like I like the way you explain it. When it but once it's shown on on the video, I'm like the way that the director did no. it in this movie, it, it wasn't it wasn't done as well as it could have been. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. yes. there are, there are other examples like like I guess the best one is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, yeah that that one's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They and, have and, eyes. and I think this, I think that this movie, along with other ones like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and even like more recent like Rob Zombie's Devil's Rejects, and House of a Thousand, Thousand Corpses, Corpses. Yeah. like they play on those fears that people have of like those real really urban people that don't have a lot of experience in rural areas, and they develop like these like myths and stereotypes and stuff about about rural areas like those those very very fundamentalist religious people that exist out there that will kill you for their religion that that type of fear mm -hmm. and i thought this movie played on that fear a lot yeah like yeah it seemed like that to me i yeah. think it did yeah it, it did it, but in all fairness in all fairness in terms of trying to put certain you know aspects. Uh, you know, like for instance, where did the where did this false god or this deity come from? Uh, he who walks behind the rose. Well, the director of the movie said that he intentionally kept it vague. Yeah, yeah. Like, at some what 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 exactly it is? But that's where it messed up. I think they should have at least revealed something. Sometimes it's best. In my opinion, sometimes it's best that, depending on the tone of the movie, depending on the type of movie it is, where you can kind of keep it a mystery, you know, where, like, for instance, Night of the Living Dead, where, the original, where the, the dead are coming back to life, and they only speculate it might be, like, this mysterious radiation, you know, but they don't know for sure, so you really don't know. So you're kind of put in the mindset of the characters. Yeah. Where they're stranded and they don't exactly know what's going on. Yeah. So there are some movies. This one uh, did it okay. It didn't do it as well as something like Night Living Dead, where you know you really don't know where this thing came from. You know, but I think maybe like speculation could have been thrown in there. You know, and I think that probably would have made it a little bit better, as opposed to like oh, it just showed up because it was bored. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought I thought they kind of dropped the ball a little bit on that, but in all fairness, I haven't seen the other sequels to it because there's eight oh, sequels. Don't, don't and, be fair with this movie. They're not, no, they're not. And good. I, <laughs> I like. I've fairness. only seen I've only no, seen no. I think snippets of like the second. I like the, the first sequel. I like the first one, but the, the sequels are not good. Like the part two, I think is like it's like you've seen part two. Yeah. There, there's certain <laughs> there's certain elements of part two that are tolerable, but it's not it's not a good 
like, and I saw the one where John Franklin came back, mm -hmm. part six, which is like cliche. It's like Children of the Corn, six, six, six. And so, <laughs> yeah, and and he co-wrote it. The John Franklin, the actor that played Isaac, mm -hmm. and it's 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 all over the place. Like, he co-wrote it. Yeah, but it's he's not a shitty a, actor. By the way. It's I not think. a good movie. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Franklin, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I actually met Courtney Gaines and John Franklin yeah. that play Isaac and Malachi. I, I met them. <laughs> I met them at one of the haunted attractions around here. But this was like years ago and they were like really nice but I was kind of like fanboying like I got really freaked out and excited yeah and and John Franklin was like taking it in stride he was just like yeah and yeah, but Cordy Gaines kind of looked like kind of like oh this guy's annoying like yeah <laughs> I didn't think they were that bad they 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 did with what they had in Children of the Corn I think uh, the acting was good in this movie the acting like, wasn't that bad. It, no, it was I mean really honestly, good. I think the acting was good yeah. in this movie, and I think the where they dropped the ball was the pacing of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's long periods of like uh, Bert and Vicky, just which are the which are the couple that, of, of adults that are stranded or just like walking around the town, like looking for help or and it's it's just like how long are they gonna do this? Like get to the you know yeah get to get point. to something yeah like we we've uh, like the director established really well, like okay, it's like a ghost town, like there's no adults here anymore, and like and and I thought it was creepy, like where they showed like little, little, little hints here and there of the kids following them around, but mm -hmm. but they're hiding behind things and they're just constantly following them and, and surveying them. Yeah, and I, if I remember correctly, some of the places they go to seem very very dated for that time, where yeah. nothing much has changed. So you can tell nobody's been keeping up with, like, let's say the calendars, or keeping up with yeah. the maintenance of certain buildings. Could be the crash. Yeah, yeah, so things like that where you can tell, like, oh, this hasn't, like, nobody's looked after this place for a while. And then there's the other interesting. Oh, they're kids, you know? They're the only ones that live there because they're killing everybody else. It's well, yeah. doing everything. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. well, yeah, that's what made it creepy is the it's fact so that. stupid. Why would you go into a gas station or something and it's like, why is the calendar still 1982? Well, the other interesting thing was where the where the kids had like kind of like put like uh, biblical passages. They had like painted on the walls and, and uh -huh. things like that. Like they had desecrated certain. I don't know if I'm using the right word. Uh, certain stuff like like the image of uh, Jesus in the, that, in that the post desecrated. office. That day. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like desecrated it. Like mm -hmm. that part was interesting. That was creepy. Like mm -hmm. because the characters are starting to look at that. Like whoa. Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, but it just dragged on for too long. Yeah. Like, that was that's the main issue that I have with this movie. Like I thought Malachi. I thought Courtney Gaines was creepy. Yeah, they they looked pretty creepy, and in their roles they looked because they looked almost like Amish people. So, well, yeah. it's, well, it's because they had like reverted the back to that. Uh, yeah, they had the almost like, like very old-fashioned clothing. Yeah, they had almost like Pitch reverted forks. back mm. to like like a like a like the pioneer days, I guess. Yeah, like, because there was well, that brings me to like one of the interesting. I shouldn't say Amish clothing, Amish style clothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like they almost were back. They almost had gone back to like the old settler days, mm -hmm. like. Um, but that brings me to one of the things that I think is really, I think is really done well in the movie is the opening credits, mm -hmm. where they have uh, the little girl Sarah that they say that Isaac says has the gift of sight, mm -hmm. and that's why they let them stay alive even though they're not like in the cult, mm -hmm. her and her brother, where they're showing like all throughout the opening credits they're showing her drawings that she made, mm -hmm. which are clearly done by a child. Mm -hmm. But they're depicting all these like really horrific things, like all the children uh, planting the corn and burning all the appliances. Like the, they're they're like putting all the TVs and telephones and everything into a bonfire. Mm -hmm. And that that will work all. in today's society. That's what kids need to go through. <laughs> <laughs> they have to learn something with their phones. Yeah. Yeah. Even, though, even though we have our phones on the table. No, no, I, I don't have a phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> like the director was using her drawings during the opening credits to like convey what has happened in the town, like what the cult did. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was real interesting and creepy. Yeah. Like to show like a child's drawing depicting things like that. Mm -hmm. To explain like what the cult has been up to after they murdered all the adults in town. Yeah, but but the reason I mentioned the reason I mentioned the sequels, because I think I remember seeing like snippets of like part two or something like that, but I don't know how far they get into the mythos of it in the sequels, in terms of like where did this deity come from and stuff like that. So yeah, in this in this first one, it might be a little vague. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> More yeah. Uh, sorry. It, it might be a, it might be vague or it might be almost non-existent. But I agree with you. Yeah. I think that it's better that way. Yeah. I think it's better to keep it vague. Mm -hmm. like it, 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 it adds mystique to the yeah. to the monster. Yeah. It's but a I think, but I think the director said something along the lines of if he had a bigger budget, mm -hmm. uh, he would have he would have like that used some of that to make the the more creature effects for the for the monster for whatever he who rocks behind the rose is mm -hmm. and possibly explained it more yeah because so, yeah, yeah i mean budget always has to do with sometimes what how good a movie is yeah because because another example that popped into my head right now where where you really don't know where this thing came from and whatnot and it's a stephen king movie mm -hmm based on a short story also is, is 1408 that's where you have movie. where you have this room now that's you have a good this movie. evil room <laughs> yeah it, i think it's a good movie and and it's Great a good movie. short story too and and where it, it's this evil room how did it become like that well you don't know it's that like makes how, sense yeah where it's like and even samuel jackson's character is like like oh, it's, it's not haunted and it's like well what's wrong with it well it's it's just an evil fucking room Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like they really don't know, you know, as to why it became that way. Like it just it just is. That mm -hmm. makes it more terrifying, mm -hmm. as but opposed to actually knowing the source of the evil. Yeah, but I think Children of the Corn should have explained it, at least in my opinion. Because it, because, because it, it, with the explanation, at least I can be like, oh, okay, now I know why they're doing all this shit. Yeah, because but I think because I think with this because I think with <laughs> sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but I think with Children of the Corn, with this he who's behind the rose, uh, or he who walks behind the rose. What rose? Um, of corn, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, of corn. I think, of corn. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think there, if they did have the budget, you probably could have gotten at least a glimpse of the monster. Because yeah. that one, you could potentially have seen it. The and only think, corn I like is the one I eat. The only the only good corn is a dead corn or what? Yeah. Well, what I what I wanted to explain more, like what we were talking about before we started rolling. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to what I wanted to explain more was the rules of the cult. Like, how was it established? Like, why were they so like anti adults? Like, why did anyone over the age of nineteen have to go? Why did why did every one of them sacrifice themselves when they reached the age of 19? Like, what was the whole idea behind that? Yeah, and what like, happened? And what happens when everybody becomes 19? What happens then? Yeah, well, I'm does saying, it recruit like, new members? I would assume if not, that that's why they would wouldn't have eight seats. After that, does it move on? Yeah. Like keeping he who walks behind the rose vague was a good idea in my opinion, but like explain the reason behind like why they're so like anti-adult mm -hmm. like what is what does it mean like why like but they never really do it's just like oh because that makes the children creepy like you say and yeah like, that's why yeah it does yeah. but explanations would help you yeah. the only thing i can think of the only thing i can think of is is the reason you sacrifice yourself or somebody who sacrifices himself when they're 19 is because they're still technically a teenager. So they're still technically a kid, you know. Even even though by society standards, once you're 18, you're technically like an adult. But in terms of numerically speaking, if you're 18 or 19, you're still in your teens. No, I get that. Yeah. But the, what I'm saying is, like, I wanted to explain, even if it's vague, like, 
why is this entity so anti-adult? Mm -hmm. like, he's a child. Why? That was, yeah. yeah. It would make sense for them to say, oh, well, this entity is like this because when he was a child or whatever, you know, the parents would hit him or, you know. And then that's why he wants to kill all older adults. You know? I don't know. I don't know. But it doesn't explain it. So it's like, what the hell? It is creepy, I give it that. I, I do find some moments that are really creepy. Yeah. But uh, I just don't like this movie. Yeah, I, I mean, how many times, like, when you're driving, especially at night, and I know, like, my route to work, I have you to hear drive. The song through, or no, what? like, well, or the kids. In, a, in a sense, yeah. And, like, how many times are you driving, like, on a, on a highway and you, you're driving past a cornfield? Mm -hmm. After watching this movie, <laughs> oh yeah, are you thinking like, wow, like I'm gonna freak the fuck out if I see a bunch of kids walk out of that corn? Yeah. Like, like you can't help it. Like, if yeah, I I can't do it. If you're a horror fan, like mm -hmm. you're like, I'm like I said, children in the corn are gonna come and get you. Yeah, but but like I said, I thought, I thought something like 14, 1408 and Night Living Dead did a better job in terms of keeping it a mystery. Uh, they main well Night Living Dead. They they had speculation in there. Fourteen oh eight. I thought the way the premise of the story was is that I thought they did a, a good job in terms of well, it's it's a mystery. You don't know. But with this one, I think they had the potential to at least have speculation. But they still, didn't. yeah, but they didn't. Oh, the, another thing I wanted to touch up on was the the score by uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan mm -hmm. Elias. Yeah. The sc I actually own the score to this movie, like I purchased the album. Like I, I really like the music in this movie and I think the music is like on a higher level than the movie's quality. Even yeah. though I like the movie. The, mu the music's awesome. Like the music is really haunting and mm -hmm. creepy. Like I, uh, like, like yeah, the score is really good in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Like, uh, I would give it an F. Sorry, guys. Really? That's worse than Spawn. Really? Mm, I, I I would probably prefer more Spawn than this one. Yeah, I know. I, my <laughs> at least at least Spawn had the clown. <laughs> yeah, the Spawn did have the clown. I think that's why. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those that's just I I just don't like. Well, there's a lot of interesting things about the production of this movie too, though, like that make it more interesting to watch it. Okay. Like it was extremely low budget, and most of the budget that they got from the studio they had to give it to Stephen King. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah, because of the rights. Yeah. Oh wow! And so it was, it was Stephen was... King's fault then. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, well, and it was during a time a they were filming during a time where they were having a hard time finding fields of corn because it was during a time where there was a surplus of corn. Mm -hmm and the price of corn had gone down so low that the government was actually paying farmers not to grow corn mm -hmm. so that they could raise the price of corn. Mm -hmm. And then when they, when they did finally find corn to shoot with, like the, um, it was during a time where they, it was already ready to harvest, mm -hmm. so it was dying. Yeah. So they were actually, like crew members were actually having to go and like, spray paint all these yellow cornfields green like they were actually having to like pain, wow. painstakingly yeah. like spray paint it green to make it look green for the shots mm -hmm. wow it's interesting i oh, didn't know that yeah i didn't know that <clears throat> but i mean i don't it's, it's i mean i what do you give it i mean uh, it's tough i would say a, a b minus to a b is i would i would give it like uh, on certain days I'll give it a B. On, on other days I'll give it a B minus to a maybe even a C plus. Like, but probably a B minus. Like it's it. Like if you. Like it, it does have a lot of issues with the pacing of the movie. But it, I think it's worth it. Like if you're a diehard horror fan, just like you said, this like just the concept alone, mm -hmm. you'll 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 enjoy this movie. And the, like I said, the music in the movie is really good. So, yeah, I, would, I mean, if I had to give it a grade, I'll say B minus. Yeah, uh, 
I was I was thinking about what what you said about Stephen King taking most of the money. I can't really blame Stephen King for that. It's more like the studio well, should. He just, had a good story. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 studio should have just forked over a little bit more money. Yeah. I guess they didn't have too much faith in the project, even though it was Stephen King, a Stephen King property. But I mean, this movie clearly has become like a cult classic. Yeah. Yeah. Like it spawned like something like eight crappy sequels. Yeah. So. And, but yeah, like I would, I would have to give the movie probably like a C, uh, probably like a C to a C plus. Uh, like I said, it, it, there are there are moments where it is cheesy. There are moments where it is creepy. So to me, it's kind of in the middle of things, where they they could have done a better job in terms of at least having. Not a, not a full blown explanation, but at least a little bit of a, like at least a little hint as to where this thing might have come from. Why does it why does it have the rules that it does? Uh, this this deity, uh, you know, because because Isaac or Malachi could have just said, well, you no, know, that's what he, uh, he wills it, so that's why it is. That's what it is. Yeah, that's that's why we have these rules. Uh, it might it might have been a little crappy, but at, at least it would have been an explanation. Or at least a somewhat explanation. But in my opinion, I would have to give it maybe like a C to a C plus. Uh, to, I still have nostalgia for it. Uh, I saw this back in the '80s. I remember reading the short story later, uh, back in the like mid '90s. Uh, so, so two thirds of us recommend this movie. Yeah, so I would watch it. <laughs> I would. I would say. I would say if if you happen to find it in the bargain bin for like three bucks. Or two bucks. Or next to the corn. Yeah. Aisle. Next to the yeah, next to the produce section. Next to the corn. Uh, or, or if you know somebody that owns it or you know if there's a way you can somehow get your hands on it without paying too much for it or, or you can get it for free, like I would recommend it that way. I would say just at least check it out. Well I'll say this, if you're really into horror movies and you've never seen it before Give it a shot. Oh yeah, yeah, and, definitely. And if, see it. and if and if you're a fan of Stephen King, also. Yeah. If you're not into horror movies, then you probably won't like this movie. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend. It, so. Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe if you're not too much into horror, but you still like some of Stephen King's work, even if it's some of the drama that Stephen King writes, then eh, I would say check it out out of curiosity's sake. You may not like it compared to the horror stories that he would write uh, but yeah I would, I would say check it out don't pay too much for it <laughs> but eh, just check it out still and don't bother with the sequels yeah I'll, one, one of these days I do want to sit down and actually like watch the sequels we're, we're not like, going to review them <laughs> no no I don't I don't <laughs> think we're going to I'm not going to waste my time I, on that I, 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 don't, I wouldn't recommend that to us yeah <laughs> like, I don't know it's like I don't know. A part of me is still kind of curious. Like, okay, let's see how bad these are, and I'll watch might, them. You might like them. And and I'll watch them, and then who knows? Maybe like a three-minute spiel of of oh my god, don't watch them. It's horrible. You know, they're they're all horrible. <laughs> Why did I do this to you myself? Really like war boy tried to warn you. Yeah, yeah. You guys tried to warn me. So so you saw it here, folks. They try to warn me. Uh, I'll try to do my best to not pay too much for them. Or somehow get them for free, and then and then watch them. So, so yeah, we're the dudes of horror. Uh, that's our review of Children of the Corn, the original. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if there's anyone out there that wants us to review anything else, uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Any other movie, horror, From TV show, anything. Short uh, story. I'm Damien. Horn boy. And Toots. See y'all next time. Yeah. See ya.